Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott. Now, while the vast majority of photographers out there are probably invested in um, Adobe's plan with either Lightroom or Photoshop, I do recognize that as Adobe has moved consistently towards a subscription type model, there's a lot of you that have been disaffected by that and you are more interested in actually getting software that you own and uh, you know aren't paying for kind of renting on a monthly basis. And so uh, one of the leading alternatives to Photoshop slash Lightroom kind of sits almost somewhere in between the two is the software Luminar, which you've probably heard about. It's become quite popular in recent years. They're in the process of continually upgrading the software and adding some new features. And since I have never actually commented on that, I thought that I would take a few minutes today and to give you a run through the actual software, how it works, what I like about it, and what I'm not so crazy about, and also highlight some of the new features. So let's jump in and take a look under the hood and find out what's going on in Luminar 2018. So when you open an image in Luminar, you start off with a fairly clean workspace to begin with. And so Luminar kind of works on two different levels. First of all, you have the opportunity to start with a preset. And so you can, you know, you have different collections. And so if you click on the uh, category here, um, you know, you've got portrait type ones, you've got street kind of oriented for this, um, some even for um, aerial type things for travel work. And of course, um, you know, the dramatic showing you different things, different options. And so you really have a lot of different things you can do. I'm just going to start here in the basic category. And so if I click, say, the mild image enhancer. Now, if you watch my video um, on the Aurora HDR, you saw a pretty similar interface to this. And uh, certainly there's a commonality between them. So one of the nice things about all of these presets is that you also have a slider right there where you can uh, kind of tweak how much of them is going to be applied. Now, unlike uh, Lightroom, there actually is, this is kind of like a blend between Lightroom and Photoshop, really, because you do have the opportunity to um, layer. You can either overlay multiple presets, and so you, you have you know different layers here you can work with, or you can add layers to where you mask in and deliver different work. So let's just look here on, uh, kind of a basic level here. So first of all, what opens up is a pretty simple, straightforward, basically what's being used by the preset itself. But here you have the option also of uh, clicking on the custom workspace and you've got a variety of different workspaces to set up. And so as custom shows, you can also uh, kind of set up one as you would like. If you are uh, someone who wants to be able to control everything, well, um, the professional is going to allow you to kind of start from scratch and to uh, to use all of these different um, tools as a part of that. Or in the case here, if you're looking at, uh, if you're someone that just wants to do things pretty straightforward, well, you've got a few different features and that gives us an opportunity to look at the sky enhancer here. And so this is a new feature that's just out and one of the you know, good reasons to upgrade to Luminar and that it really allows you to kind of selectively work on your sky without having to do any kind of manual work. And so it's taking care of all of the masking. It's handling both highlights and shadows information. I mean, to achieve something like this, you would have to do all those things, probably work at the color level. Um, and by that, I mean the actual luminance in a certain color channel. Um, to achieve that. I know how to do all of these things, but to be able to do that with just a slider, you know, and to control the degree to what you want it to look like. And so you have the option, of course, all the way on to go with a fairly darkened sky, a little bit more vivid than what I would look for here, but you can bring that back down to a more natural level. And of course, see real time what you are doing there. Um, the other, another option here is accent. I'm going to take it all the, all the way to the extreme to show you that. And so this achieves something a little bit like a tone mapping where it kind of goes to a fairly extreme, um, level of dealing with your shadows and highlights. But again, it's a way if you want to just, you know, quickly control things, then of course you've got clarity down here. Now, another nice thing here is that you can just work kind of according to the type of image that you've got opened up. And so um, in this case, since I'm working with a landscape type image, you can number one, start off with your different kind of 
profiles and so all the basic camera ones you can go to an adobe or you can just stay with a luminar white balance of course you know you have control over that as per typical you can do the eyedropper you know a lot of these similar tools that what you would use uh, say in lightroom and so or you know photoshop acr i should say so all of that is is pretty straightforward now uh, you have all of your basic things here. And so we've already seen the accent. So here we could throw in a little bit of that sky enhancer. But the reason why I really like this, um, you know, using something specifically like this is that if you go on down, you've got some of these other things that you can use. So foliage enhancer, for example, this is of course perfect for the kind of image I'm working with. And so rather than having to go into all of these uh, color channels to boost the appropriate ones, I can just play with this slider a little bit and uh, get to a level that I like. And even if you're wanting to, uh, if you're working with a golden hour type image, here's going to an extreme obvious, but you know, obviously I could with an autumn image, some warmth is appropriate. But one thing you will note here is that until you get into the extremes, you're working on a pretty non-destructive level kind of preserving the integrity of the color balance of the image, but just kind of popping the appropriate type colors. And so I like that. And then of course you also have the ability to, you know, to play with how much, even at that level that you're working at, how much of the saturation is there. And so, you know, there's something that I kind of like. You can play with the tone curve there. Now in this case, you can actually even use um, LUTs, lookup tables as a part of this. And so um, you may have some LUTs that you like, or there are some that are built in. And of course, with all of these things, there's also, you know, more um, presets that you can purchase, you know, all of those things. Structure, you can deal with, um, you know, how much kind of like it's all it's really it's got to me it's like a tone mapping type look i'm not a big fan of that but of course your mileage may vary you know maybe in very very minor amounts it can make a difference um, radiance vignette you can control all of those basic things then on top of that you do have uh, other basic tools that you can add on here you know cropping transform and clone and stamp you can also work on the camera level module if you're wanting to, you know, deal with lens distortion, all of those things right there, transform type tools. And so you have just a lot of uh, different things on hand here. Now, if there's something that is not here, I mean, obviously there's a, a limit to how much you want to have there. You have the option of actually, you know, deleting modules that you may not use, or if you click the add filter, you have the option of uh, then, adding, you know, kind of whatever ones you want in. And so if, particularly if you're wanting to make a, you know, so let's just say for, you know, someone like me, I'm accustomed to working in HSL. So adding that hue saturation luminance in there, if I wanted to actually play with those things myself, you have more of an option of doing that. Uh, photo filters you can add in. And so this is similar if you're wanting to uh, deal with something, for example, like you might do in Photoshop and you have the ability to play with these filters right in here. And so, and then you have the blending and masking type options to see what you want to do. And so you could add a color filter all through that. Or, um, you know, something, you know, Orton, you know, all of these kind of things, which can be fun to play with split toning, uh, you know, there's a lot of different things. And so you, you really have a lot of control over what you're going to have on there. And in this case, I just want to uh, control a little bit of sharpening. And so um, I can throw some sharpening into what I'm doing and um, control that. And so, uh, as you can see, pretty straightforward and easy to use. If, if you have used Lightroom or Adobe Camera or Raw, there's a good chance that you can pick this up as I did within a few minutes and be feel pretty familiar with what you are doing here. One final thing that I like is uh, right here, if you click on this, it gives you kind of a split and so you can see real time the changes that you have made and uh, you know whether you've actually accomplished what you have wanted to do and uh, look back at the original. So it's, it, that's a cool feature there as well. And when you're all finished, of course, you can go into your export module and then you can make a choice choices about what format you want to export kind of sharpening you want to do resizing your quality color space you know labeling all of those different things that you can do as a part of the final export of your image 
So there are a lot of positives going for Luminar. It has a reasonable price. Um, it has an easy to use interface. It actually has a, a lot of uh, tools that are built into there. So you, you can kind of go as deep as you want or as shallow as you want, but it maintains a little bit more of a user-friendly interface than something that has a really steep learning curve like Photoshop, for example, more akin to using Lightroom than anything else. So all of that I really like. Now, in terms of what I don't like, um, depending on how you use it, like I use Lightroom as a part of my uh, workflow, not just for my kind of basic edits um, and kind of my launching program for where I move to other platforms, but it's also the place where I do all of my, you know, kind of cataloging and metadata. And at this stage, and I think that there are plans to um, make that more robust in the future, but at this stage, Luminar um, doesn't have all of that same kind of library type functionality. Uh, the other thing that I, I find that is a bit of a negative for me is that at this stage, I think that Luminar still runs more slowly than what a equivalent programs from Adobe do. And so um, on my workstation where I can run things fairly ably uh, for running uh, Photoshop or Lightroom, I find that it, it, it is a little bit slower in operation. Not so much in you know the basic module, but if I'm switching over to something like clone stamping or whatever, it slows down a bit. Transitioning between modules, it also is slower in opening images and exporting them. And, and so there are a few downsides there. However, it is a very robust, a very functional piece of software. And so if you're looking for an alternative to a Lightroom or Photoshop to where you actually own the software, you can get it at a reasonable price. And they do a pretty thorough job of keeping it updated. And so it can handle the raw files from your new camera or you know the lens profiles from your new lens. Then I think that Luminar is doing a pretty good job on those fronts. If you are interested in getting a copy for yourself, look in the description down below. There's both a link to get there and also a coupon code that will give you a discount if you uh, take a look there. I'm Dustin Abbott. You can also find linkage in the description down below to follow me on social media, to uh, become a patron or to sign up for my newsletter. And if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.